Okay, this example is going to look at the analysis of a simple truss using the method of joints. A truss is, as, as in the diagram there, it's about as simple as it's possible to get with just three members and one external load, the 15 kilonewtons, acting vertically downwards. As with many problems of this type, it's best to start by determining the support reactions in the, exactly the same way as in earlier examples. So we can do this fairly quickly by drawing a free body diagram and noticing that the support on the left is a hinge and therefore has two support reactions and the support on the right is a roller with just the one support reaction. So as before we look at equilibrium of the whole truss then we can start by resolving forces horizontally and because there are no horizontal forces acting other than the possible support reaction, we very quickly get that support reaction is equal to zero. And then on the second line there, we can see that this the structure and both the loads are now symmetrical, and so both VA and VC will be 7.5 kilonewtons acting upwards. We could, of course, take moments about either A or C to get the, the same result there. So with the support reactions known, we can now apply the method of joints to determine what the forces in the members themselves are. The, the method of joints um, looks at the equilibrium of each joint, that is where the members of a structure connect individually and considers the equilibrium of, of the joint. Um, it's best to start with a joint where you just have two unknown forces. So here we're going to start with joint A and it's best to draw a free body diagram of each each joint as you analyze it. So in the diagram just on the on the left there, we've isolated joint A and imagined taking a cut through members A B and A C. And as a consequence we've we've got these forces F A B and F A C that we need to determine. So we'll start by resolving forces vertically. And the external force, the 7.5 kilonewtons, is acting up. And then there's a vertical component of the force in member AB. We're going to assume that the force in the member is positive, so there's a positive sign in the equation there. This is a, a standard approach. If, in fact, a force turns out to be compressive, then we simply get a negative answer once we've worked things through. So we've got the, the cos 30 there because we want the, the vertical component in the, for, in the member AB. We work that through and we find that the, the force is indeed compressive. It's a negative force of 8.7 kilonewtons. So that's the force in member AB established. We can now resolve forces horizontally. It's a very similar approach we get that the horizontal component of a force in member AB that we've just worked out is minus 8.7 times the cos 60. And then we have the force in member AC as well. If we work that through, then we get the, the force in AC is 4.3 kilonewtons. It's a positive number. That means the force is a tensile force. So we've worked out the forces in member AB and AC now. And we've still got to work out the force in BC. Uh, to do this, we need to isolate another joint and adopt a similar process. So we could choose joint B or we could choose joint C. It doesn't matter. In this case, we're going to go for, for joint C. And we'll draw the free body diagram again. The forces of the external force, 7.5 kilonewtons acting upwards. The force in member AC, we now know, is 4.3 kilonewtons and we've just got the force in BC to establish. So we resolve forces horizontally, then we get an equation like this. I've written the signs here very explicitly. We've got a negative sign to indicate that the force in member AC is acting to the left, so it's in a negative x direction, and then in brackets the positive sign because it's a tensile force, we take tensile forces as positive. And then similarly in the second term there, I put a negative sign in to indicate that the horizontal component of the force BC is acting in the negative x direction, but we're assuming it's a positive tensile force in the member again. If we work that through, then we find that the force in BC is similarly minus 8.7 kilonewtons, so it's a compressive force in BC. 
and we've now got the forces in all the members and the support reactions and so our, our job's done. Perhaps worth noting that with the method of joints, because the forces always pass straight through the joint, the moment equilibrium equation isn't useful when analysing each joint. You just get zero equals zero. In contrast to the method of sections, where you apply both vertical equilibrium, horizontal equilibrium and moment equilibrium. And we'll look at that in a later example.